Hello. Welcome back to the podcast. Hello, podium. everybody. I'm going to accept a... Oh, you're echoing, Stu. Is this any better? Hello. Hey. Yeah. There we go. The yeah. volume was very low. It's okay. <laughs> I'm going to uh, take responsibility for the podcast being a month late. Better chest infection. <laughs> And I'm sure you didn't want to listen to me cough for like a good hour or so. So <laughs> feeling better now. So yeah, let's uh, let's get into this. Hey, welcome back everybody who listens and who doesn't listen and start listening. Yeah, <laughs> we've got a uh, a big list of things to go through as well. Yeah, you're, you're echoing against you. Uh, okay, why why do we think this is happening? I don't know, but uh, I can hear my voice. I can hear your voice too. Hold on. <clears throat> Technical difficulties, it's okay. First day back. Oh. Actually, I don't even know why I'm doing this. It probably won't help. Let's see, how loud should it be? Check. Audio. Here we go. Check. Is this any better? Sounds alright to me. Okay, it might start again, but it's okay. We'll, we'll see. Just, we will persevere. Yeah. <laughs> right, so yeah, uh, we've got Season 22 to cover, Fantasy League, Monthly Tournaments, Forza, and then we go into real life stuff. We can back at the, the uh, very quiet transfer window that happened. Yeah. Um, <laughs> a look at, well, if you look at real life football, and then steal it in with films and TV. Woo. And of course, this is a surprise return. We haven't got any Q&A planned. <laughs> That's okay. These things will come, and we will be prepared. We, we we've learned from last year, like uh, the attempts to get a bunch of people to do one pod podcast. Maybe we should do that uh, pre Christmas next time. Yeah, we'll, when people aren't so busy. This is episode nine, I think. So, might next, next episode we could get a few people on. Being the yeah. tenth episode, so we could do that. We'll see what happens. Anyway, so yeah, so season 22, um, this quick look at Club League 1, uh, I'm currently top. Yay! Um, 10 points. Commiserations. <laughs> one point ahead of Welsa. Um I'm happy with Southampton so far, they've done me well. I'm very glad I brought them over Shakhtar. Yeah. Um, Aaron's third, Tossa's fourth, and Bryce on fifth, all on seven points, but Aaron's got the goal of difference. And Macadan is 6th and Wigsy 7th. Uh, it's going to be a tight league as there's only 7 of us, so I can see it going down to the wire. Especially yeah, I... If... Go on, go on. I'm not going to say, especially <laughs> if me, Welsa and Aaron, all top 3 players in the, in the, on FIFA, so... Yeah. I have to admit to being a bit ignorant of the leagues this uh, season, seeing as I'm not in any of them. Um, but I, I've been paying attention to other parts of the site that maybe I would have otherwise neglected. So that's fun. So some season I'll be able to do everything all at once. <laughs> but but for now, nice. yeah. But for now, I'll trust uh, your commentary on all the leagues <laughs> and that you are indeed top. Yes, you are with um, three wins and one draw at least. Southampton, yeah, they're a good team actually. I I started my first ever career mode. I think in about two FIFAs. I just, I've never bothered. I don't think FIFA 13, I did it all. But this one, I was like, oh, why not? It's a bit different. Um, and so I picked Southampton as my team because they're, you know, they're a decent team, but it's also a bit of a challenge to get them up into first place. And yeah, they're quite fun. It's room to improve as well, as well as people in the team that can improve themselves. Yeah, the likes of uh, James Ward, Price and stuff. I found a site that tells you their overall growth and uh, I think he can hit the mid 80s and stuff so yeah some of them have a uh, good progression stats so uh, <coughs> let's move on to uh, Club League 2 <coughs> we have Dan who's won 5 drew 1 out of 6 games commanding lead over 2nd place Dazzler uh, 8 points difference so yeah it's such an early point in good position yeah, yeah well Rex uh, here has a couple of games in hand yeah, so, so he's so Tosser Junior yeah, and both of them, uh, providing they're not playing each other next, could move within three points of Dan. So keep the pressure on, lads, make it exciting. And you got Worm on one point, and RL Spurs and Dearest Storm both yet to score any points. You need to uh, step your games up, lads. Yeah. Still a long way to go. You could easily 
get into the playoffs. It's only going to be one person missing out in the playoffs. So. Yeah, so, so uh, it's got to be someone, but uh, do your best and not get sucked down that far. At least have something to play for at the end of the season. Yeah. <laughs> Without any good plenty to play for, really. Also, had to get promotion or playoff place. Exactly. Uh, let's move on into the international league now. Um, I'm top no. by two points over Worm. And I've got Worm next, actually, in the international league, so it's going to be a tough game. Providing these uh, badges are right, I see you stuck with Italy. Yep, again. I, I, uh, I, I'm part Italian, Forza Italian. <laughs> Just can't bear to part with them. No, obviously, the last time I had Germany and I dominated with them, but yeah, we weren't in the leagues this time, so I went with my uh, my home country or my second home country. Obviously, you will go for obviously Wales as well, but they're not in there. Yeah, Wales uh, there has a couple of games in hand. Uh, he's got Mexico. I remember Mexico being good a few games back. They've got. A lot of small players, but they're all really fast. The likes of uh, Dos Santos and Chicharito yeah, and yeah. whoever else. He's got games in hand against Macedon, it seems, and he's currently sitting seventh from four points. So yeah. he could get something. He beat me, Macedon, in the first game. Yep. So he's won my losses. So yeah, it'd be interesting to see how uh, things turn out in that league. So, so these are. Yeah, so these are all the Xbox One leagues anyway, and there's also a couple of 360 leagues running at the moment. You guys have not been forgotten, don't worry. Yeah, so the 360 Club League sees Big Ash one point ahead of Wince. Um, everyone's on the same amount of games, so that's easy for us to decide who's where. Yeah. Uh, Cows is sitting three points behind Big Ash, one win. That's not a lot in the, in the leagues. Yeah. So you can easily get six points over the two fixtures. So they can easily change. And Hernandez also sitting four points off Ash. You could easily step in and claim his own um, place in the top. Yeah. I don't know I'm going well, that. Even look down Destroyer, who uh, is in eighth place. He Two wins will put him up to third, You know, depending on other results. So uh, it's still early in the season. Uh, you're going to be playing 14-odd uh, games. So uh, there's no need to panic just yet. No and uh, yeah, with these with these leagues as well, where there's no relegation or fear of relegation, you know, you can kind of go all out on the tack. Who cares if you ship three or four goals if you score five? So you may as well make the most of it while you can. Yeah, international league sees the same story. With Big Ash on top of the international league as well, but on the same amount of points as Hernandez and Rince. So Hernandez sees a game in hand over Rince and Big Ash. Um, Osh sits three points off the leaders and Bring It sits four points along with Gasgrass both four points off the leaders and Bring It has got games in hand as well as Osh yeah so is is there anyone who's playing in both the Xbox One and the 360 leagues or no I haven't seen any draws over I'd like to try and say for next season oh yeah I could do 360 league but uh, it's probably a lot of commitment and probably going back to the 360 just you'd realise the difference between the two games because mm. there is a noticeable difference so. yeah I would even want to try to do a 360 league now that's for sure yeah <laughs> going back in time yep. so let's move on into the fancy league now which is our special league that is exclusive to members only <laughs> but, um, we're looking to get a Division 2 open for next season, so keep your eye on it. Details are in the forum at the bottom. And you never know, it might be you lot next season buying and selling players with the likes of Dan, Aaron, Roach, myself, Miku, um, Big B and Rizzy. You can, all these shady transfers that go on in the show box when uh, the rest of us are <laughs> around. And uh, secret, secret PMs about this player and that player, and you can oh, actually them yeah. earn. Your pounds along with your scudo. Yeah, yeah, I can imagine. Yeah, you can earn pounds along with your scudo, so that's that's fun too. Extra incentive to uh, join all the extra events like fours and COD or whichever else. PFI and other yeah. FIFA events we have going on. Two v two clubs, everything. Yep. So currently we see Dan top on goal difference and with games in hand over Aaron, who's also won twelve points. Roach sits three points off, also games in hand. So at the moment, it's like between 
Dan and Roji, but you can never count Aaron out. Uh, I'm currently fourth on also on nine points. Uh, Magoo and Worm are sixth, fifth and sixth. Magoo on four, Worm on three. Wise seventh with one point, and Rizzi yet to get any points for his team there. Yeah, don't want to get relegated, lads. Some of your players might uh, want to jump ship and move off if there's a second league. But um, yeah, Dan has a pretty commanding lead there. 1-4 uh, out of 4 and only 2 goals conceded and 9 scored. So uh, that's pretty impressive. So he'll take some beating, I'd imagine, in that league. But I guess with all the transfers you guys do throughout the season, it can change. You lose a player or you gain a great player who can make the difference in the last few games. So I guess that's why it's important to be, if you're in this league, to be on the side as much as you can and constantly aware of who has what player and who's willing yeah, you to sell. You need to be active in the fantasy league, especially for yeah. the auctions. And there's an auction actually starting tonight and it'll end tomorrow for those in the fantasy league. Yeah. Players up for grabs are Salah, who's newly went to Chelsea, oh. Stasic, Anderson, who's went from United to Florentino for on loan, Victor Vanema, Santon, Kierches, Landon Donovan, Barnetta and T.I.E.K. from Nuremberg. Okay. Very good players there. And again, going back to Southampton, Wanyama is fairly a beast in career mode. So if, if he's anything like that online and you need a defensive mid, then I'm going to say go for him. So I'm going to start. Actually, yeah, Southampton in the club league. So we there you go. CDM. Yeah, so we just started a bidding war now, so uh, everyone get your hands on Manyama, or attempt to. Yeah, tonight, I think the ocean will open at 7, 7 or 8, it's usually when the ocean's open, so keep an eye out for that, keep an eye out for tomorrow when it closes, because it suddenly turns into a sniping war, <laughs> if four people are trying to outbid themselves on players, yeah. <laughs> and then you lose and you blame the site, and as Marcus, this is, this, yeah, Marcus has discussed many times, it's not the site's fault. Don't blame the site. <laughs> so we're going to move on now to the Cups in Season 22. And we'll start with the Xbox One Cup League Cup, which is me in the final. And I'm awaiting my opponent. And it could be for Big B, Tossa Jr., Dan or Worm. Uh, I beat Aaron in the semis. 3-0. Quite happy with that. Not an easy thing to do. Fair play. Um, I can see. Don't know what I can see actually going through out of the four that are left. It's gonna be very tight. Yeah. Well, you've got a few games to wait anyway, and uh, yeah. see who's gonna come through. So uh, you might be waiting a couple more days. Oh, I can. I'll sit there happily in the final, waiting for my opponent to appear. <laughs> Mess around with formations and uh, make sure you have everything tweaked to perfection. I've got everything tweaked to perfection. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, he's confident. Yeah. Okay. Well, are you are you defending champion of this cup? Uh, no, I have won it before, but I did, I'm not the defending champion. Oh, okay. We will move on now to the international league, where I am the defending champion of this oh. cup. But I got knocked out in the first round, so that shows you what can happen. Oh, okay. <laughs> How anticlimactic. Yep. Uh, the semi final is the Colin Mechelen versus Wigsy twenty three and Dearest Storm versus Dazzler twenty four. Um, at least we're crowning a new champion in the uh, international club. Yeah, it's always exciting when uh, someone new gets a yeah. shot at the crown. So good luck to the four that are left and maybe yep. best man win. Now we move on to the 360 Club League Cup, which sees Soggy Cabbages face Big Ash in one semi final and Ash Rain to face either Hernandez or Vince in the other semi final. So we'll see what happens there. Obviously, everyone's going to look to Big Ash to be favourite, considering he knocked out Cows, who was also third in the league. Big Ash is top. But as you can tell with the Cops, you never know what could happen. It's like the FA Cup. Anyone can win it. And that's proven with me in the International League, with the, calling the new guy knocking me out. No. So... If you win the cup, never mind where you won the league, go without it, and you never know. Could easily yeah, find yourself in the final. Yeah, the the league's very the league doesn't give an indication to how one off cup matches go, you know, you can just concede a couple of early goals and then 
it might be all over before it's even started. But uh, yeah, the cup's always a bit exciting. Had a few good matches made, maybe one final, maybe two. Especially if he goes to golden goal, gets very tense. Very, uh, yeah, definitely. Very on edge people can be. He goes to golden goal. Yeah, I think that was myself and Big B, if that was one of the cups, um, having to go to a third match, I think, after a nil-all and a one-all draw, and then that third match ending after about, you know, 10 in-game minutes or something, so it can happen. Shows you how it can be. Let's move on into the International 360 Cup, and we see Hernandez face Big Ash in one semi-final, Destroyer face either Bring It or Rush in this other semi-final. Again, good luck to all those that are in the cup still, and no doubt we'll keep an eye on you and cover it in the next podcast. Yeah. See if we actually do have any winners or if we have any finals lined up. Right, so we'll move now on to the monthly tournament. Uh, January saw the Darren Nisley Memorial Trophy, um, an annual event now after the sad passing of Daza Baza from our side yeah. and from the world. And yeah, for anyone who didn't see the the PM for Marcus, uh, between us on the site, we managed to raise £151 for uh, the Muscular Dystrophy Charity, so fair play to everyone who donated, Um, I'm sure it's much appreciated, and uh, yeah, so thanks again to everyone who either both participated or donated, It's uh, especially from such a small community, I'm sure it's it's an appreciated gesture, so good job everyone. It's only like 60 of us, but we're a close family. And exactly. All we can say is hope Don does are proud of this, and uh, yeah, let's uh, get on to the results. Um, round one saw Storm beat Big B, Wells beat Spurs, Ginge beat me, and Aaron beat Marcus. The semi saw Storm lose to Wells and Aaron beat Ginge, and the final saw Aaron beat Wells so, so to Aaron on winning the Xbox One um, monthly tournament. In inaugural competition. And in the 360 tournament, we saw in the semis, Destroyer lose to Wince and Cows beat Hernandez. And in the final, Wince beat Cows. So congrats to both Aaron and Wince for <coughs> winning their respective tournaments. Good job, guys. Uh, we'll move on now. A uh, quick look at the February monthly tournament, which is based on Europa League teams. Mm. Uh, group 1 sees Asbestos, Dog, Macadan, Big B, Hello Worlds, Aaron and Chile in one group. Group 2 sees myself, Wells, Spurs, Big C, Ibod and Andy in the second group. And the third group sees Storm, Codin, Master KK, Yourself, Toon, K hey. and Emotional Worm. Yeah, I've had a, a slight break, so uh, I'm excited to get back into the swing of things. And I'm about to find out my team at the same time. Don't you know you Very good. Some German lads. That'll do. Nick Freiburg, if my memory serves me well. That is the one. So, uh, yeah, some decent teams scattered about there. We've got uh, the likes of Ashi, well, Machakalaka, Halalalala. Uh, until, uh... Yeah, until they. Fucking shipped out half their squad due to being dodgy Russian mafia types who own the club. Um, but yeah, Valencia, I see there, Sevilla, uh, Bordeaux are probably decent. Uh, Wigan would be okay. Um, Saint Etienne have, I presume, that player that Chelsea bought and then loaned back recently, Zuma. Yeah, so he, he's obviously, and uh, there's Swansea there as well. So uh, a good Premier League team for Storm. So yeah, it should be fun. Let uh, everyone get cracking on their games and uh, make it easy life for uh, Bri there yep. to oversee us all. So I'm sure we will. If you have any problems with fixtures, please contact Bri and he'll do his best to help you out. Yeah, And then there's the 360, uh, two groups there of yep. uh, four teams each. So uh, same uh, same applies to everybody, basically. Yep. Play games. Oh. Let's go. Cows, We're big ash, Organic word and bring it in the first group and Soggy Cabbages, Gas Gloss, Footy Mad and Wince in the second group. So, good luck to everyone. Um, how do you think you're doing your group, Steve, considering you've had a good long break from FIFA? Um, I obviously I need to get used to my team, but um, I've actually been having a good time with FIFA recently. I feel that um, 
playing career mode has actually improved my game. I think uh, I played it without playing any online matches for a couple of days, and then I, I went into Ultimate Team and I cruised to division promotion or title, and then I did a few season matches, and I, I think it made me a lot more patient or something because you just got to... There's so much passing involved online, like the computer doesn't allow for any of the type of stuff that you get away with online. So I think it just made me pick my passes more carefully. And then, yeah, when it came to defending against people online, I found it really easy. I beat, I took pictures of it. I was going to put it in a thread. I beat an entire team of legends, an entire team. So actually, where's, hold on. I'm going to, I'm going to name the team here on the podcast. Yes. So I took pictures after it happened and I was going to make a thread because it might be my crowning. Uh, ultimate team moment so this guy had in goal David Seaman then he had a back three of Rijkaard, Campbell and Cannavaro he had a midfield of Paolo Futre, Rui Costa Effenberg and Lundberg and then up front was a trio of Fowler, Weya and Romario and uh, I beat him with a bunch of German lads basically uh, like <laughs> Mandzukic and Draxler and uh, Javi Martinez, Weidenfeller Schmelzer yeah, all, all kind of decent players, but you know, I've never had a huge amount of coins in Ultimate Team, so uh, I just have to pick up what players I can for certain positions. But yeah, I beat him 2-1, and I think he scored from my goal kick. So yeah, screw him. Delighted. <laughs> <laughs> I, um, I actually played a team the other day. It's made up of Team of the Year and Inform players, and I beat him 6-3. I used the uh, Upload Studio to make a nice little video. Oh yeah, <laughs> to congratulate myself. So I'll be putting that on YouTube sooner or later. Lots of, lots of pats on the back. Yeah, the, yeah. Annoyingly, the Irish region Xbox ones don't have a lot of those functions. You need to switch your Xbox to either make it think it's from America or England. So I haven't been able to record any feats. Uh, a friend of mine and me were playing Dead Rising and just having the biggest laugh and trying to not breaking the game but just doing all these bizarre things, and uh, we didn't get to record any of it, which is really disappointing. So, uh, The cons of a DVD in Ireland. Yeah, eventually Microsoft will get their act together, and maybe sometime in 2016 I'll be able to say, Xbox, record that, and uh, it <laughs> well, should happen. It's meant to be a massive update happening next month, so... No, no, okay. It, it could be the time yeah. where uh, Ireland finally get the, uh, the voice commands that yeah. everyone else has. Because obviously it's easy enough to change the region, but then as soon as I want to buy something off the marketplace, it won't allow you, and so you have to switch back to the the region that you're from. So it's a, a bit of hassle going back and forth between the two. So I kind of I just haven't gotten into that side of the Xbox yet, and even little things like Xbox On or Xbox whatever, no voice commands. Only the in-game ones work. That sucks. Make me sad, Microsoft. Come on, <laughs> get it together. Even even EA. Let's me like curse at my players and get players sent off. So you know, and EA are pretty shocking. So I'm sure you can out uh, update them. Yeah, that's, that says it all. When EA can do it, and Microsoft can't. Exactly. So uh, yeah, we move on to Forza now, which is come very popular. Yeah, 18, uh, 18 <laughs> races. So my God, I think that's a record. I think it is actually. Um, I'm going to have a quick run through of the uh, standings here. We've got Asbestos Dog first on 311 points. Go on, lad! <laughs> yeah, that is Steve's teammate, so uh, yeah. He's going to be happy <laughs> seeing him, his teammate top. Uh, yeah. Aaron sits second on 224. I sit third on 222. We have Cropper, who's Dog's brother, on fourth on 197 points. And he only did... I think one night of it, so uh, yeah, he's, that he's, could be. He's had eight races and he's won seven, so it shows you. Oh, okay, yeah, so that uh, could be interesting. How good he is. Uh, my teammate sits fifth um, on 192 points. And we'll finish here, Swoach, you on sixth on 164. Um, I'm not going to go for 018 because there's a lot of people. And there's <laughs> more to come as well, by the tricks of it, because there's a few more people interested. Yep. So for those that have. Those that listen to the podcast before the Falls event, as I said in the PM earlier, first 15 to sign up will get in because you can only have 16 people in the lobby. And if you miss out, put yourself down as a reserve and you could get in if somebody drops out. Yeah. Maybe there, there might be a few people missing with the, the big match on tonight, but we'll get to that uh, when we talk about 
our actual football. I know Tars is not making it, so that's one space to freedom. Yeah. <laughs> that's what everyone else have no idea. And I will watch at least the first half of the match, but uh can probably go without seeing the second half. I guess. I won't because I've got to defend my King of the Hill crown against Marcus at any cross. Oh, uh, okay. So that's all right then. But um, yeah, Forza is a lot of fun. So if you can get on it. Um, and then also, anyone who is in the leagues or wants to join, there is a racing etiquette thread about uh, basically Rochi smashing into everyone and how to avoid him. <laughs> so. <laughs> not, not, no, sorry. Not, not to be any naming names, but yeah. yeah. He, he was merciless, mercilessly bullied last time. So we'll try to uh, less of that, seeing as we are talking about etiquette. But just in terms of overtaking and. You know, everyone kind of be constantly on the mic, you know, let people know if you're about to slam into the back of them and just try not to. But, uh, yeah, we're trying to overtake here like gentlemen, you know. It's like so, Formula One, you know, nice clean overtakes. Exactly. Just imagine that the little ma- little avatar guy inside your car, his life depends on you not uh, running them off the road. Cars. Yeah, trying to be too aggressive around that corner. So uh, everyone just take it easy. <laughs> Doing a, uh, doing don't a skipping your car five times. Yeah, the, uh, yeah. How about don't spin me off the track? Like, <laughs> you know, only every other race I'll accept, so I can actually just you know be in a position that reflects my actual driving skill. Seeing as uh, I'm helping carry me and dog to the uh, constructors title. Well, just saying. Fun constructors. Based on <laughs> that, uh, you are top, company. Team, <laughs> team skid marks. Yeah. I won four hundred and forty nine points. The brown Not team, uh, red team of me and worm team red stripe on four hundred and fourteen. Uh, Scruffy Yorkshire tracks, which is Aaron and Rex on three six five. Just behind them are the team of team Fluffy, pink team of Rocher <laughs> and Cropper. Um, Scruffy Yorkshire tracks are team yellow. Uh, Destroys Generals, which is Marcus and Tata Junior, which is team purple, are on two eight nine. Uh, Sol von Blanc is Team White, which is Rizzi and Big B. Uh, Wild Rakers, which is Dan and Wild Walker, are on 137. And Sky Blue Spurs, which is Spurs and Tuzzle, are on 128. And they're Team Blue, I think. I, I have to about. admit to be being a little disappointed not getting the team name Shitty Shitty Bang Bang. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I was quite proud of that one, and uh, but maybe next season. Yeah, the, hopefully, skip, skip. if enough people stick around, there'll be a season two. If yeah. people want it, we'll give it. Simple as. Um, are the time trials coming back? Yes, I time trials know. will be coming back yeah. next week. I think I'll make it. Um, I'll put a, a thread up this week sometime asking what people would like to see in the time trials or if the time trials were okay by itself. And we'll get season two up and running. We would like to see someone beating Destro, I think. <laughs> I, think, I think we have done in Cropper. Cropper did set the fastest time in the last time trial. Ah, uh, okay. I have a huge margin as well. Yeah, I, so. I also believe that Destro was uh, giving some tips, seeing as he couldn't complete the uh, the Forza season. He saw <laughs> no point in uh, holding back all his Forza secrets. And I think uh, I thought Rochi was one of the people who was supposed to benefit from that training. Yeah. But, uh, Rochi, yeah, he hasn't was he's a, just those teammates. Yeah. So, and he was always looking to help out the Yorkshire lads. We'll yeah, so we'll see if uh, Rochi brings his new fine skills to the track or uh, if he just kamikazes everyone off the road. <laughs> <laughs> Tonight's a clean slate. So, yeah, we'll can, can I just just mention here, sorry, this is completely uh, on a tangent, but uh, I was just watching Sky Sports News and they're showing, you know when they show up all the, the lead tables on the right-hand side? Yeah. So there's some Northern Premier Division <laughs> League and one of the teams who was bottom had two points from 20 matches and also minus 100 goals. So, uh, well, yeah, shit, shit time to play on that team. Yeah, Just saying. I feel sorry for those fans. Um, congrats to them not actually going folding their team. Yeah, just giving up and just saying, why bother? Maybe it's a team of midgets. Maybe it's the principal <laughs> matter. And uh, the goalkeeper just keeps on getting lobbed. <laughs> It was, it was, I don't know, I don't follow anything of a video. Yeah, I, couldn't, I didn't even pay attention to the name of the team. I just saw two points, and the next nearest team was on 20. So uh, I think if you're a betting person, you can probably stick down a tenner on them, getting relegated and get back about 1p. Yeah. So, <laughs> but, 
Don't don't smirk at the profit. M pounds one p. That'll do. All right, so uh, let's move into world of football. Um, the transfer, transfer window. Yeah, the transfer window. How quiet was that? Yeah, Please move um, the Chelsea made some signings. Matter went yeah. from Chelsea to United, which is the big Crazy. signing. Yeah, I can't can't wrap my head around that one. Just Mourinho being a egotistical dickhead and thinking he can get rid of probably his best player. <laughs> like I. It almost shows kind of disrespect to United saying, hey, we can give you this player and we still don't think you're going to be an issue yeah. like come the end of this season. Or even like, you know, Matt is not just here for half a season. He's not on loan. Like he's here for the foreseeable future. So that is also to imply that he thinks that, you know, United won't be any trouble next season either, maybe. But yes. uh, who knows? Hmm? East, uh, Chelsea and United have played both times this season as well, so he doesn't need to worry about Matter coming back to bite him in the arse. Yeah, that's true. A lot of Matt these little next games. season to get his revenge. Yeah, and you can only think that you know if United were able to pluck out thirty-seven million pounds from whatever debt-riddled state <laughs> the Glazers have them in, then they're going to have more money during the summer as well. So they're only going to strengthen. Um, I don't see them finishing top four this season, so they're gonna they're gonna be without the Champions League money. But I don't think that will probably make a difference to them. Well, so. a lot of United fans are say, stating that uh, the transfer window in the summer will be where Moy shows his true colours and can bring in people like Fidel and Royce and this Tony Hibbert. <laughs> 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 Moises, Moises' son, Tony Hibbert. I don't think he's getting a game at Everton, so he's probably uh, he's probably transfer listed come the summer. Perfect. He'll be rubbing his hands with glee. He'll be taking over Raphael's position at right back. Yeah, well, yeah. Raphael does love a bit of a sneaky tackle. Um, I remember his two-footed lunge just after Vidic got sent off for a, probably a non-red card defence. Then Raphael decides to dive two-footed in, but... Uh, Escape with the yellow. He was a uh, he was a bit lucky in that match. Yeah, you say you're lucky to uh, escape with well, yeah. I think Arsenal come away with the transfer window with the most hilarious signing in oh. uh, Kim Kallstrom, who then injured himself in warm weather training with his old team and is now possibly out until March. So <laughs> good job we, there. Oh, don't. <laughs> we went from Draxler. Okay, Draxler, a young. German, he was very yeah, good really promising player. He's great at Falcon. So that went out the window. So it's like, okay, we'll go after Kalu. I think has been after Kalu for ages. That goes out the window. Yeah. Medjudi, that goes out the window. Schneider, yeah. that goes out the window. Then he's like, okay, we'll get a striker. That would please people. <laughs> Riega, that goes out the window. Fuchinitz, that goes out the window. Marius Kroso, that goes out the window. Hmm, <laughs> who can I get? Oh, no, I'll get Kalstrom. Yeah. Oh, and we got him. <laughs> he's our saviour. <laughs> he's our saviour. He gets injured in training and he's now out for two months. Yeah. I can only imagine he was brought in because the likes of Ramsey and Wilshire are injured and they needed someone yeah, to play that, in that, that too. That was his plan, yeah. Because Flamini yeah. stupidly got sent off against Southampton. He, uh, he was like, yeah, Cal should have come in. He'll fit in for a few games. Then Flamini yeah. was and Yeah. Like well, after, um, after seeing this day, we fought the Yachts, and he seems perfect here where the plane to set the mid, so let's see how yeah. it I think uh, Arsenal's next match is against Liverpool, and you'll have Flamini back for that one. So, um, but no, that could be. He's out for three games. So he's oh, for three? Oh, okay. He's straight red, so he's missing the, the Southampton game, the game against Stu, and the United game, I think. Oh, I, thought he'd already, I thought he'd already missed the game. Or... Um, and then Liverpool came away with zilch players zero. You saw after that Ukrainian kid, and that fell through. Yeah, I I read a lot of conflicting stories. The general thing seems that their owner stepped in and basically said no to the entire transfer after everything else had been agreed. So apparently, he had a release clause that we met. He even went as far as doing a medical and agreeing personal terms. And then, yeah, the owner stepped in and said no. So, yeah, there's obviously like a few talks about uh, legal action because if you meet the the buyout clause, then I think 
no one's supposed to be able to come in. Like the obviously a bio clause is part of a legally written yeah. contract. But uh, so I don't know if we'll be back for him in the summer. Um, it may be. Well, okay. Following the West Brom game, it probably seems like yeah, it would have been good to be able to bring on another attacking player to uh, try and shake things up. But we are obviously in need of like a, a defensive mid and maybe a couple of fullbacks. So that will be what we do during the summer. Well, you'll uh, win midweek against your Merseyside rival or seven. Shows that yeah. it's actually needs that attacking prowess with Stovage. Yeah, and sure is back in form. It was just, I think, yeah, and, but to, then to go from that to the draw against West Brom, but then the only reason we, we messed that up was a, a really horrendous Colo Torre pass right across his uh, own 18-yard box, which was intercepted by need to be of all yep, players. Cool. Yeah, but I guess even saying that, though Liverpool fans are complaining, we're still still in fourth, two points ahead of Everton, uh, Three odd points, I think, ahead of Spurs and seven ahead of United. And should Chelsea lose to Man City tonight, then we'll only be three points behind them, and they have to come to Anfield. So uh, yeah, so still all to play for. Not going to win. Only, but, only what, eight points off the leaders. Well, so. Yeah, well, ele- eleven points. I, I hope it's eleven points off tonight. Obviously, the optimistic Liverpool fan would hope for a draw between. City and Chelsea, but uh, we're not going to win the league, so I think we need the closest to us to drop points, which is Chelsea. So um, we'll take a ma- we'll take a resounding Man City win, just thump them, hopefully. Next week also be a big week with uh, us versus you, which is a big game of the yeah. weekend at Anfield, and yeah, Arsenal entering their horrendous February of Liverpool, Munich, Liverpool, United, Munich, something like that. It goes. So, uh, it goes. You Liverpool. Oh, well, Liverpool away in the um, in the league. Liverpool at home in the FA Cup. United away, I think it is. Yeah, no, United at home, then Munich away. No, Munich at home, actually. Yeah, you've got three home games on the trot. Yeah. But, uh, at least we were at home for a few games, which is nice, but... Tough, we'll see it. Tough list of games that we've got. Yeah. You'll have to see who Wenger decides to prioritise in each match. I think, obviously, the... The Liverpool match for the FA Cup, you might feel the slightly weakened team, but uh, we can feel free to throw everyone at you. So, uh, Nick, for after, after our FA Cup game, you have Fulham well, sitting yeah. at the bottom of the table at the moment. So. <laughs> yeah, they're not too impressive a team at the moment. I think they have, the, on average, the oldest team in the Premier League. So, um, yeah, and they just haven't kicked off or done they much. Just sign, um Metrologlu for Minipinakos. He could be their saviour. Convenient that as uh, it takes away probably Olympiakos' top striker against <laughs> who then had to play United in the yeah. Champions League. That seems an odd move it's for fairly, them. Yeah, it's a very strange transfer, but I yeah. know, maybe Olympiakos feel confident with the players like Joel Campbell and Trice. And yeah, else they got yeah Vladimir Weiss isn't a bad little player. Saviola as well. Experienced player, yeah. So yeah, so still a still a lot of stuff to happen in the Premier League. Maybe the if City do win, maybe the title will start to become more theirs. Obviously, Arsenal are still there, but uh, the race for fourth could be the exciting mini league, depending on how some results go. I think a lot of the teams still have to play each other. I know Liverpool have United away at some point and Spurs at home. We've played Everton twice now, but and then we've also got still to play Chelsea, United and City. So uh, a lot of teams still to play each other. So looking for the fixtures, we've got a tough March as well. End of March, we've got Tottenham, then Chelsea, then City, I think it is. Yeah, City. And yeah. within that time period, we've also got Munich as well in the return they go to the FA Cup. Lovely. So yeah, it's going to be a tough test for... Uh, uh, Finger and our team. I can see why a lot of Arsenal fans are pissed off with Finger for not getting another striker in. Because when we've got Giroud, but when he gets tired or injured, we've got Lord Bennett to save us. And Yeah, and Podolski if you ever fancy playing in the centre. Yeah, if Finger uh, actually decides to put him in the centre, yeah, but I mean, Walt, he won't. Walcott's out injured again, isn't he? So. Yeah, he's out for the rest of the month. Most of the, oh, month, okay. most of the season, even. Oh, uh, okay. So he's missing the World Cup as well, sadly. Uh, uh, yeah, it's a shame. It's a huge shame. 
it's just, it's just, he won't be playing his next World Cup now for another four years. And he considered doing, he went to his first World Cup at the age of like 17. Yeah. It's a very strange, very strange period for him. Right, so we'll end with films and TV with you. Uh, really? It's been a good few months since we've done the podcast, I think two months or so. So, so I've probably been to the cinema quite the last. Yeah, what have you um, seen over the last few months, Steve? That really what have I people? seen? Well, all the Oscar films are out in force uh, with the Oscars coming up. And I'm not actually even sure when exactly they are. I think they're probably March or thereabouts. So um, we'll do some research. Of those films, I've seen American Hustle, 12 Years a Slave, and The Wolf of Wall Street. Um, I have to say my favorite film out of all of them has been The Wolf of Wall Street. I haven't laughed so hard at a film in a very long time. There's one, if anyone's seen it, there's one particular scene where uh, DiCaprio's character is on drugs at a country clubhouse and he attempts to drive his car home. But uh, it's about, you know, between five and ten minutes of just... DiCaprio being a comedic genius um, so yeah that scene was amazing so he deserves an Oscar just for that bit alone um, also the one the 2nd of March hosted by Ellen DeGeneres oh uh, ok um, oh yeah speaking of celebrities and stuff we had uh, Philip Seymour Hoffman passed away there the other day who's quite an Oscar favourite so there's been a few actors <laughs> who have uh, who have died in the last while. You've had the likes of uh, James Gandolfini, one of my favourites. Uh, I presume maybe quite a few of you have seen The Sopranos, and he was just fantastic in that. So sad to see him go. And the bloke from Glee, Corey Monteith. Can't really say I watched Glee, but uh, I think the Oscars actually is being dedicated to him. Um, everyone, like, they do, they do a section in the Oscars where they mention uh, all the actors who have passed away, but I think specifically it's... Uh, being held in his honour. Um, but yeah, okay, so that was just a little aside. But um, yeah, 12 Years a Slave. Uh, for some people, a tough film to watch. I'm, I'm quite easy with watching kind of, you know, hard to watch things. So like, obviously there's a, a few scenes of whippings and torture and stuff like that, um, which are fairly graphic. So if you're of a nervous disposition, you might want to look away. Uh, at some particular ones, there's a particular slave called Patsy who uh, is in for a rough ride at one point. But um, yeah, really just good film, uh, really well made and shot and really good performances by everyone who was in it. Michael Fassbender as like this really horrible, awful plantation owner. And then uh, I, I'm not sure how to pronounce his name. I'll give it a shot. Uh, Chuito Elijah Four. Yeah, something along those lines. Also, he plays yeah, that's a good pronunciation. Thank you. <laughs> um, he's the lead, and uh, he's great as well. So uh, he's probably up there for the Oscar nomination. And then American Hustle, uh, which is a strange one. It's really popular, at least like awards-wise. I think all the four main actors, um, Bradley Cooper, Christian Bale, Amy Adams, and Jennifer Lawrence, are all up for their respective acting awards. But I just didn't think it was as great as it's been made out to be. Like It's quite funny in parts. And it's well done, but I think I was just expecting maybe something a bit different. And then, you know, when you your expectations are one thing and then the film turns out to be slightly different, you're kind of left going, oh, okay, so it wasn't what I thought I was going to see. It's it's a lot maybe more lighthearted than I thought because it's about, a, it's about a, a scam that happened in America in the 70s, but it's quite a fictional version of it. But uh, I didn't expect it to be so kind of lighthearted in tone. But uh, yeah, it was still good. And a lot of them are worth seeing. Uh, there's another film that I'll be seeing. Actually, tomorrow I think I'm going to go see Out of the Out of the Furnace. It's uh, Christian Bale and uh, a few others. So uh, I'll report back on that maybe in a couple of weeks. And then we've also got a uh, Dallas Buyers Club, which is Matthew McConaughey, who's uh, gone back to doing serious roles in films after he did a lot of Hey, look at me taking my top off and being in romantic comedy type of roles but yeah now he's back as a serious actor so uh where he plays um i think is like kind of homophobic possibly kind of racist guy who uh contracts aids and then starts shipping in illegal drugs which weren't available in america at the time to uh try and save both himself and uh, the kind of aids other people suffering with aids so we say yeah, so yeah news story about that uh, and he lost like six stone to play that part 
Yeah, that's a, a huge, um, huge commitment. That is yeah, for, definitely. For the world. But, like, yeah, six stone is huge. You know, some people lose six stone. You know, they'd be on the verge of death, basically. But um, yeah, that's one of the things the academy uh, loves is like kind of body transformation or like really putting yourself on the line, like for a role. You know, kind of going method, as they call it. But um, yeah, I think Matthew McConaughey is like the kind of dark horse. Uh, no one really really expected him for best uh, male actor, but uh, I think there's a good chance to him and also. Jared Leto, who uh, has spent more time in his band, I think they're 30 seconds to Mars. Yep, that is correct. Uh, right? yep, that is um, but yeah, but now he's come back uh, uh, as a supporting character in this role. I think he plays a, a transvestite or a transsexual in the film opposite Matthew McConaughey. Yeah. And he thinks yeah. she looks very good as a woman as well as a man. <laughs> it's weird. Yeah. But also, he can put it off really well. He's got that kind of androgynous <laughs> look to him if he likes. But um, yeah, he. I think he won the Golden Globe for Best Supporting Actor, so uh, he's a good bet for uh, Best Supporting Actor at the Oscars as well. Um, and a quick mention for TV, um, Matthew McConaughey again. Okay, so if no one's heard of this, there's a new program. It's like the next big thing. It's HBO's next big program. It's called True Detective, and it stars Matthew McConaughey and Woody Harrelson as uh, two detectives in the present day, which I think is 2012 who are brought back in there. They used to be detectives, and now they're brought back into the district they used to work in to talk about a case that they both did back in 1995. So the, the program jumps back and forth between the two timelines to show uh, a murder case of a serial killer that they were involved in tracking down. So uh, it was really well made, and obviously uh, we've got two kind of really big actors. seems to be the thing now is that uh, actors have realized the TV is like a serious way for them to... Uh, you know, showcase their talent, and I'm sure it's uh, not paid badly either, seeing as you're doing, you know, X amount of episodes over so many series. So, yeah, so that's a true detective. So, um, it, it's weird though, I've seen the first three episodes, but now the next episode isn't out until February the 9th. Um, so I don't know if they're taking kind of extended breaks, but then also on February 9th, we've got The Walking Dead, which comes back for the second half of uh, season four, I think it is. So uh, for anyone who watched it, we'll get to see what comes of everybody. I think everyone's all a bit split up now after events of the end of the first half of the season. So uh, we'll get to pick up with everyone and see how they're all doing. Um, yeah, I think that's it for all the TV I watch at the moment. A lot of stuff ended. We've got Game of Thrones. Anyone who watches that, that's going to be back in uh, April, I think. So it's still a bit away, but uh, there's enough to watch in between. Um, keep you all busy. So yeah, so that's films and TV. Watch there a lot of shit. <laughs> <laughs> and there's me who doesn't watch like anything at all. Yeah, get on that. You're missing out on the the golden age of TV. They're calling it at the moment. I think yeah, that happens yeah. every now and then. You know, there's there's a blip when it's just like reality TV and just awful shit, and then uh, all of a sudden it picks up. And so I'm sure this happened again, like back in the 70s or 80s or something, where there's a rubbish TV followed by you know a hat like a whole bunch of programs that were fantastic and then they they dip again in quality until they get picked back up so yeah so we can thank HBO for that they probably pioneer in a lot of this good TV with the Sopranos and the Wire and Boardwalk Empire and the like yeah well, well done to HBO for making good TV <laughs> yay right, uh, we're going to uh, leave it there for this week um, should be back doing the podcast to be fair Missed it. Put yeah, part of me that's uh, been itching to get it going again. Yeah, so. come back here into uh, the AG Podcast Studios. Been yeah, very nice. Miss, miss my place. bedroom and, and my room. bedroom. Yep. Yeah, I'm lying on my bed, having a relax. I'm sitting on my. I'm gonna get one of those. Um... I don't know. I'm gonna get one of those light up signs that says "on air" and stick it outside my room, and then maybe it'll <laughs> feel a bit more. Yeah. <laughs> what does it do like at my house? Okay, so yeah. People interrupting. Yeah, I just hear knocks on the door, and then you can't say anything because then all you'll hear in the podcast is, yeah, okay, in a minute. Yeah, two seconds, oh, you know, just finish. Leave it on. It's a very awkward feeling when you knock on the door and you're like, don't say anything, don't ruin the ruin the flow of the program. But uh, it has to be done. These, yeah, just like the hiccup at the very start of the program with uh, my echo. I hope you guys have gotten this far. So. <laughs> You um, weren't yeah. put off. <laughs>
I know Magoo was listening, at least. I'm yeah. pretty sure I know what tunes in for. Yeah, yeah. One, one thing only. Um, Love you, Magoo. <laughs> long time. Um, so, yeah, we'll see you in two weeks. Um, for those that have made it this far. You could be on our show. You can be our special guest. We're going to be... Oh, my this God. This episode. We want a special guest. We want you, just like Uncle Sam. We want you <laughs> to be our Don't special fight. guest on this show. And you get questioned by the community. Um, anything and everything. Go back over our previous episodes. You'll see the kind of questions that people have asked in the past. Yeah. And uh, expect that kind of area of uh, questions. Yeah, especially anyone who's uh, new to the site because we did have a, we have quite a few new members now. We have a uh, huge influx of new fem- members, which is good. Yeah. Welcome to the new members. Yeah, so you, you guys might not have been aware of the podcast before now, but um, yeah, it was it was popular, I guess, on the site. We hope. So um, yeah, get yourselves listening, and then if you wanna, and also yeah, because if you are new, this is a great way to introduce yourself. Um, yeah, if you're still kind of finding your way around the site and you're still chatting to everybody so yeah so get on here and uh, tell us all your darkest deepest secrets and we'll take the piss out of you for a while yeah and then and, you'll be and then you might appear on another podcast yeah. and you'll get pulled up again yeah we'll, we'll just chuck you back into the mob it's okay <laughs> right so we'll end it there uh, thank you for listening and we'll see you in two weeks catch you guys later adios bye bye